Hi, Tom Walls, Carbide Processors. want to talk to you about manufacturing maintenance and a couple of tools that have really helped me lately. We're rebuilding some equipment. And for, well, for us, maintenance is two kinds. One is routine maintenance, rebuild, servicing, greasing, oiling, that sort of thing. The other kind is fixing it now because something's broken and it's affecting production. Um, most of the equipment here we've got is specially built. I ordered it heavy, I designed it heavy, and we try and use smaller redundant units instead of larger machines. Still in all, when something goes down, it's not good. We have to fix it right away. Couple of things. This is a Bondus 5 16 This is a 13113 um, hex head. It's got the ball hex head. When you need to get into a hex head, the ball slips in. You can use it at an angle. It's got special steel. It won't twist. You can use it two-handed. A lot of times, um, some of the things we're rebuilding are conveyor ovens, 1,500, 1,600 degrees, eight hours a day, day after day after day for years. Uh, the parts bake together. A lot of times when a machine goes down, there seems to be a part that's stuck. Um, I really like a tool that I can get into a tough place and that I can reef on with both hands because we got to get it fixed now. Um, this is great. This is the 13 piece inch ball end and straight end hex set. Um, even the straight end has the edges rounded so it slips in. Uh, plenty of length and plenty of strength once again so that you can reef on these if you can. And I don't think you're, I'm supposed to tell you this, but I know a guy personally who has been known to use a cheater bar on hex wrenches when you really need to. And in my experience, these will take it. We'll guarantee it. If you have to use a cheater, um, cheater bar on them, go ahead. Uh, if it doesn't take it, I'll be very surprised, but I'll definitely replace it. So something else. I bought some new pliers. These are Philo, which is related to Bondus. Uh, nice pliers, good deep serrations. Um, when you look at it, the jaws, when you look, hold it up to the light like that, the jaws close tightly so it cuts well. And when I bought those, I splurged and bought a pair of these because I always thought they were cool. Never thought I would use them very much, if at all. What we're doing is, is we're replacing new chains, uh, the drive chains that hold the flights that go through the hot zone in the, in the brazing oven. These things were paid for themselves in convenience alone when I was down fiddling around, well, either way, but fiddling around trying to get the link, uh, trying to get the little toothpick shaped snap uh, that holds the master link in place. Um, other place they came in really handy, the new chain came wrapped in a circle and wired together at the end. Um, this was really nice reaching in and, and fishing the wire out. Um, one of those tools I thought I didn't need, thought it was just extra money. Um, and as always, if you get the exactly right tool, you find out why they made these in the first place. So that's it. If you're in manufacturing maintenance, I strongly suggest you take a look at your tools. Uh, if they're not, if they're cheap tools, if they're the three dollar, they're the three dollar pliers from the aisle at home, the special aisle at Home Depot or whatever. Strongly, strongly consider replacing them. You want you want a pair of pliers that'll grip. You want a pair of pliers that'll that'll take a lot of pressure. You want a pair of pliers that that you can twist without them twisting in your hand. You want you want one of these that's not going to flex, uh, that you can use with both hands. If you really, really got to have a tool, we got the tool for you. That's it, I guess. Thank you very much. Bye.